My name is Ryan. My friend Kyle and I have taken our barroom conversations to the internet in the form of Michigan's most up-and-coming sports talk podcast. From baseball to Bigfoot, we cover it all. You're in for a treat because you have found the Turbo and 2K Show. What's up, 2K crew? It is Turbo and 2K's. And you know what? It, it's I'm not going to lie. It's a little hard to get in the studio this weekend. It's been such nice weather. And finally, it's not raining. It's not 50 degrees. And 2K's actually got a little sun yesterday by the pool. So, yes, we are we are warriors once again, putting, putting out this content for you guys and the public. So, 2K's. Do you feel me on that? Is, is it a little hard to get, get get in the studio? Absolutely, absolutely. I just keep on looking out the window thinking that the rain has got to be coming. I mean, it's yeah. got to be yeah. any minute now. And we're we're recording on Sunday because we actually went out and went outside and got some stuff done and 2K's had us over for some uh for some grillables, which was awesome. And uh, I actually went to a bonfire last night, so I actually got some fresh air, had to recharge the batteries. So I was like, all right, you know what? It's going to be rainy on Sunday. It'll be it'll be the perfect day to do the show. And, well, it's it's sunny and probably about 80 degrees. Yeah, I think so. they pushed everything back. The rain's coming this evening. Yeah, yeah, which is which is perfect. You know, get your grilling in, get your pool in, you know, get, get your round of golf in, whatever you need to do. But we've got – we're going at the show a little bit different this week, guys and gals. Normally we have a kind of a strict schedule that we that – we, we never stick stick to, but we usually try to. We like to call it call it an agenda. But we've got uh, two points, and then maybe a third if we get some time. So we're just gonna. We have a couple things we want to touch on, but uh, the conversation I have a feeling is not going to stick to these points. So we we teased you with it last week. We're gonna hit the. We're gonna break down the Tigers. We're gonna talk some fantasy football, and if we have some time, we're gonna sneak in some NBA draft talk. But. Fuck, we've been putting it off now for almost a month, talking about this fantasy football league we want to get going. So let's do it first. Let's let us let us make it a priority, goddammit, because if we don't, we're going to be running behind. Everyone's going to be like, oh, Turbo, if you said something earlier, I'm already in five leagues. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, fuck you. We're, we're getting it out there right now. <clears throat> and you need a, another hobby if you have five fucking fantasy football <laughs> leagues. But uh, for those of you that don't know, I, I have... In the past, run ran a league for the last probably 12 years. I stepped down because uh, 2Ks and I were already in, already had talks that, you know, we had wanted, wanted to start the podcast. We wanted to do this. We had all these you know, grand plans, and we're, and we're trying to stick to them. And one of the plans initially out the gate was a fantasy football league. Mm-hmm. So what we're trying to do is 10-man league and... If we get enough, which I have a feeling just ju- just from judging by the even just the little teasers that we're doing is that we're probably going to have two two ten man leagues, which is perfectly fine. Um, we want to do a live draft. We're probably for those of you that are that are local and, and that can make it, you know, maybe do it at Drop Anchor mm-hmm. on a, you know maybe Chris will let us do it on a Sunday mm-hmm. when they're. So we're not taking up too much of their real estate with the the restaurant and everything. So maybe we'll do it like that. But uh, for those of you that have played in the drop anchor league that I ran, it's going to be kind of the same but different. You know, two Ks and I were sitting here before before we uh, popped off and went on went on live about uh, you know the scoring system we want to use, um, what type of format we want to use. And as far as the price and we haven't, haven't really gotten the price nailed down yet, but it's going to be with it probably that probably at $50 mark. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Wouldn't you say, especially for the first year. And if we get a lot of folks that are uh, interested for next year, you know, maybe we can bump it up to 75. So my pocketbook gets a lot fatter <laughs> and your money is always better than my money. So, and <clears throat> For those of you that think uh, 2Ks has not come out of his shell yet, you're right. Wait till fantasy football starts <laughs> and the amount of shit talk you're going to hear. Well, that's, I was just going to mention, I think it was me last season 
that ran the table, went undefeated all the way through the regular season, all the way through the playoffs, and then hoisted the you know the Super Bowl trophy again for not the first time, not the second, I think the third time in my drop anchor fantasy football career. Well, I'm I, I mean this this was the last two years I think. I I I think I won it last year. And it's up until this year, it's either been I missed the playoffs or I won it all. Mm-hmm. I actually made made the playoffs as a four seed and ended up as fourth place. But you, <laughs> but you know what? A check's a check. Money's money. Like I said, my and I think I actually made more money than what I put in. So that's that's all that matters. But yeah, uh, the scoring system. I, I know everyone's going to ask about this, and I think what we've referred to it in the past is an adjusted um, PPR league. Mm -hmm. You know, we, and you might, you might be completely on the other side of the fence on this, but you know, two K's and I agree standard scoring fucking sucks. This is boring. It is, you know, in, in, in our, because we, we talked about this before we even hit, hit the air that it's more based on touchdowns. Yep. Granted, you do get points for yards and stuff like that, but we like to kick it up a notch. Well, it drives me nuts because you can get a running back that might get three carries the whole game, but one of those carries results in a two-yard touchdown, and he's you know outscoring a guy that's getting twenty carries and a hundred yards. You know that's just doesn't work out for me. I don't not a bit not a fan of it. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you, and so when we and this is the same scoring that we've done at the drop anchor league since its inception. Mm-hmm. And what we do is it's it's a PPR, so your you know receivers are going to get a point per reception, your running backs are going to get a point per carry, your quarterbacks are going to get a point per completion. Quarterback scoring a uh, point for every twenty five yards, and on top of that, instead of the four points which ESPN normally does for a passing touchdown, we do six. Mm-hmm. All touchdowns are worth six. Yep. No matter how you score it, all touchdowns are worth six. In, in my mind, it's easier to keep track of that way. And yeah, and I, like I said, this, this isn't a new scoring system we just came up with yesterday. It's been proven. So, and it, and it does make for a little bit more excitement in the mm-hmm. league. Mm-hmm. And this train does not understand our podcast <laughs> recording schedule. But uh, yeah, that and still the quarterbacks, if you have a mobile quarterback and he runs it, that's a point per, per carry. Mm-hmm. And uh, going off that, running backs again, point per per touch, yep. whether then, it's uh, reception or or a handoff, point per ten yards, yep. you know, rush or receiving, yep. and then six points, yep. six points for every touchdown. Yep. And your receivers are the same way, because yep. I mean there there are some receivers that do get carries, so mm-hmm. it's all the same. And then when you get the freak wide receiver, running back touchdown throw mm-hmm. that's six points as well yep. another uh little little sidelight is that uh i i i take the approach that if you're going to be ballsy enough to go for a two-point conversion those touchdowns aren't two mm-hmm. those are six as well mm-hmm. quarterback throws it that's six points if his you know if you have the quarterback and the receiver fuck you just got 12 points just on touchdowns and then a point per reception mm-hmm. and a point for completion mm-hmm. so that's a 14 point swing right there. Yep. So, and same thing with the running back. Quarterback rushes it, same thing. So, when I say all touchdowns are 6 points, all touchdowns are 6 points. And as far as the the defense and special teams, we just kind of leave those stock. We don't do the return yards, we don't do anything like that. So, cuz that gets really confusing. Mm-hmm. Really confusing. So, I think that is, is I miss, am I missing anything here with the with the scoring? No, I, I, I don't think so. I don't think so because, like I said, it's it, it's an adjusted PPR, mm-hmm. and it uh, just to kind of give you guys an idea. If you're hitting, what would you say about two to two twenty? You're sitting pretty yeah, every week yeah, usually. Yep, yeah. unless you're playing against me, then you're going to need two fifty, two sixty. God, it's starting already. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it, love it, love it. So we will get you guys more information when we get closer to what I my goal is by in two weeks have the date and the time set so that we can get it out to you guys. Of course, we're going to do it on air, but in the in the Facebook group as well, 
I'll give you guys my PayPal address because my goal is to have everyone paid by the, the draft day because pretty much first come, first serve, guys and gals. So the first eight that get in are going to be with me and 2Ks in that group. And if we have enough, we're going to run another one. And because I want everyone to know when they're drafting, what what pick they're drafting. And I know what you're going to ask. Can I trade my pick? No. 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 We're not getting that fancy. Mm-hmm. We're not, we, we like to keep shit simple sometimes. So if you get pick nine, deal with it. Yep. If you get pick four, deal with it. Mm-hmm. If you get pick one, good for you. Yep. Good for you. And speaking of that, I I don't think – normally there's a pretty much like – number one guy that everybody wants yeah and i i think you can go probably four or five different ways this year and still come out with the best running back mm-hmm. there isn't that you know for years and years and years you know ladanian tomlinson being your number one pick and adrian peterson being your number one pick well if it wouldn't have been so confusing last postseason with the todd yeah. Gurley situation yes. i think he was he if he would have played every down like he did all season in the playoffs last year and into the super bowl he was your no doubt number one pick of the draft. Absolutely, but because of all that confusion and what I don't whether he was hurt, what was I don't know what was going on. I still think it was something to do with an injury, or and that was the reason why. Or he sprained his vagina. Some, yeah, something something was going on. <laughs> whether I don't I don't know what it could have been, but if he was playing like he should, like he had all season long, I think he was your no doubt number one pick of the draft. But because of all that, he's he's a little bit scary going into the season. Yeah, I mean, you could go the. Zeke Elliott route. Yeah. I mean, the most electric running back is Barkley. Yep. But do you want to have your number one pick on arguably the worst team in the NFL? Where they're going to stack probably 13-man boxes. Mm-hmm. But like yeah. we talked about, when you play in a league where you're getting a point for every touch, mm-hmm. he's going to touch, if, as long as he's healthy, he's going to touch the ball probably more than anybody in the league. Yep. Yep, I totally agree. And, you know, even Le'Veon to the Jets. Mm-hmm. How's that going to work? Mm-hmm. How's that going to work? And I know there's probably some dudes we're leaving off the list here. Yeah, and you know, I mean, and and you can't, you can't, I can't knock anything that Le'Veon's done in his career, but part of that is Pittsburgh, just the, the play style in Pittsburgh. Tomlin did not shy away from giving him the ball 25 dude. times. I don't know if that's gonna if it's gonna stay the same when he goes to New York. New York's always been that team that's had two or three different backs, and they're you know yep. switching it every every drive. And owning a, a, jet, a jet running back over the years has been. You know, almost as bad as owning a Patriots running back. So it's a very good, very good uh, comparison. You're very right. So I'm like, I don't know what to think about that. I want to think he gets you 60 points one week and two yeah, the next week. Yeah, you just don't know what you're going to get. I, I, now, in that that being said, the Jets haven't had a running back in years to this caliber. So I'm, I want to think that they're going to say, hey, let's just let Le'Veon do his thing as long as he's healthy. Let's get but, him the ball and let him do it. Especially with a you know young quarterback. You know, it, and it's a different coaching regime. You know, when those you know, your Chris Ivories and Belil Powells and all mm-hmm. that were there. So, like, there's the, the, like I said, in my eyes, there's not that slam dunk number one pick. Mm-hmm. I think you're going to have five or six running backs, mm-hmm. ev- you know, jostling every week for the number one mm-hmm. number one player in the league. So, it's going to make it really exciting. Another thing to kind of keep an eye on is with no Gronk. Yep. You know uh, that kind of widens the spread i guess you could say or opens the door to when do you take a tight end and who do you take because they're, they're i think travis kelsey's travis kelsey and zach are probably your top two. two yeah and then you get probably five or six that are the next tier mm-hmm. but i think we can all agree that even all that you know the top tier and those two guys they aren't gronk no you know no. i mean and, well i mean travis kelsey's there and the He's he's probably not what Gronk was when Gronk was in his total prime, but he's right you know right there behind him, mm-hmm. and plus playing in an offense when you got Patrick Mahomes as your quarterback, you got Andy Reid as your, as the head coach yet calling the plays, so that's one reason why I really like him. Also, I really like Ertz just because it's Carson Wentz's team now. There's mm-hmm. no question there. Yep. Foles is out out of the picture, and it's it, you know it's pretty obvious who Carson Wentz's favorite favorite yes. target is. Yeah. So. That's, and, you know, get, get, getting back to Kansas City, you know, they have a quarterback now that can throw the ball more than 20 yards. Mm-hmm. So when, when Alex Smith was there, of course, Kelsey's going to be his favorite target because he can't throw it to anybody yeah. else. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing with Kelsey, too, is um, Tyreek Hill. He's not going to be there. Yeah. So yeah. to me, 
I don't know if that's a good thing for Kelsey or if that's a bad thing for Kelsey because having all that having all the speed on the outside opened a lot a lot up for Kelsey and now that's not going to be there anymore so you know it's it can I can go either way on that one um, another tight end that's that would not shock me if he goes out and does the same thing he did last season is Ebron you know Ebron yeah. kind of came out of nowhere last year and a lot of people were counting him out and didn't think he was going to do anything and he him and Andrew Luck, they definitely got a good thing going there. So yeah, and, and, and like getting to, getting back to Andrew Luck, you know, it, it, it was I, I've always been an Andrew Luck fan, mm-hmm. just his the cerebral approach, and it's never easy to be the guy to follow up the guy, mm-hmm. but I think he's done a hell of a job following up Peyton oh, Manning, yeah. and <clears throat> it's it, it, it's always nice to see him come back and have a season like we all thought when he got drafted. You know, he's the, you know the, the next you know, the next smartest quarterback to, you know, John Elway and all the, you know, Wonderlick scores and all mm-hmm. this shit. And, you know, it, it's, it's always nice to see those pan out. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the, he, if you take, if you take Ebron off that team last year, they're not making the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And I think they were a year early from what a lot of people thought they'd make the playoffs. So they've made some very good moves. So the, the Colts are going to be an interesting team interesting team by far and you know you got the the wide receivers everyone you know we have two two new faces and two new places mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. let's see how ab how he adjusts mm-hmm. and uh obj let's see how they they mesh together because uh they're with the same team since they got drafted yeah. so they've yeah. ha- have the have had the chemistry with their dudes so well on the field chemistry mm-hmm. You know, you could argue that neither one were happy, mm-hmm. which if I, if I was playing with Eli Manning, I probably wouldn't be happy either. <laughs> but, yeah, so let, let, let's see what Baker Baker and him can do. And I still think Brown going to the, to the Raiders, I don't know. You know, yeah. he, he, he was always the, you know, one or one A wide receiver to take. So mm-hmm. I I think I it, it's not even an argument to me. You have to take Big Ben mm-hmm. over – Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, Over Carr. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and to me, I mean that those both of those names, like Brown, Brown's probably still in my top five. Back on maybe five, maybe six. I kind of have him each there. To to me, it's a for the top receiver. I'm in between Devontae Adams and uh, Hopkins, and maybe I think probably right now, if I had to pick at either one of them, I'm probably going Adams. I think he's more of the safe bet just because he gets in the end zone a lot. But Mike, as far Michael as Thomas domestic, is another good one. Yes, yes. And uh, the Saints are about ready to make him the highest paid receiver yeah. in the league. So mm-hmm. let's see how that money affects him. And then he's got Drew Brees. Yep, yep. But even but, you know, go, go, going back to history, Drew Brees, man, he could, you're, one of you, if, it's like which receiver of his do you take? Because mm-hmm. he's going to throw the ball all over the yard. He has his whole career. Mm-hmm. So they, it, it, it's going to be a very interesting – very interesting draft, and I guarantee you, no matter if it's this league that you're playing in or any other league, you might walk out of your draft going, I don't know about this fucking team. Yeah. You know, because there's probably the last four or five years, I'm like, you know what? I like my fucking team. Mm-hmm. This could be one of those years you're like, I don't know. Yeah. I really don't know. I really don't know. And that's, you know, that's one of the reasons why we want to do 10, uh, 10 man league because mm-hmm. eight seems like everyone has yeah. a badass team. Yeah. And twelve, you're getting up to there where if you if one of your studs do go down and you don't handcuff the pick, mm-hmm. you're scratching. Mm-hmm. You're, I mean, I'm not saying there won't be players there worth taking, but it's like, oof, mm-hmm. oh god. So ten is kind of like that happy medium. Uh, all right, let's check the same thing here. All right, yeah. So uh, I think we hit all the. All the buttons here except for the shit talking. So <laughs> let the shit talking begin. And uh, if you have any questions about it, hit me. I'll uh, I'll post something on the Facebook group about the scoring and everything just so you guys can see it in print instead of just uh, all up in your ear holes. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, Kyle and I will field any questions that are that are that pop up on there. and Or just drop me an email. Hit me up on Facebook, whatever you need to do. But... Uh, and, or if you're, you're like, fuck, I want to do it right now, what's your PayPal? I'll drop mm-hmm. me an email or hit me up and I'll, I'll give you my PayPal. Mm-hmm. So, and, and like I said, to, to be, I think to be fair, that's the best way to do it is first come, first serve. Yep. 
and then you know as i, I have a few i have a, i'm almost 100 percent positive we're gonna get one mm-hmm. and i'm probably 90 percent that positive we're gonna have two mm-hmm. so and i really don't want to open it up to more than two just because that's a lot for a lot to keep a lot to keep track of mm-hmm. one of the one of the things that i kind of want to um, and I, we haven't talked about this yet, but it's just an idea that I have, um, throw around is for the draft order. What if we, um, because I think speaking for myself and I think a lot of pe- other people out there, I would like to know what order, where I'm going to be at in the draft order, yes. maybe a day or two ahead of time just mm-hmm. to kind of plan for it. So what if we went live on the Facebook page two, three days before the and and basically you know called out this is what, where your pick's going to be and I like basically it. have like a, a draft lottery or whatever however you want to call it and, <clears> and so I, everybody going into draft day knows what pick they're going to have who they're picking in front of who yes. they're picking behind yes i and i've always been a huge proponent of that that's one thing we we have not been able to pull off at the drop anchor league but uh but yeah no i'm i'm 100 behind that so, and mm-hmm. again i will give you my paypal account if you want to and it gets everything. season the deal a little bit to kind of you know toss me a couple extra bones maybe i'll give you the pick you want <laughs> probably not but you can toss me some extra bones anyway <laughs> but yeah that's uh i, I love that idea mm-hmm. i love that and, idea and i think it'll start a little bit get everybody on there obviously wanting to know where their when their pick is and all that and i think it'll start the trash talking maybe a little bit sooner than on draft day yeah yeah and uh and we, and we want to speaking of draft day we want to do it live because a we've done it not live for the whole time at drop anchor and it's a lot of work to actually go input everyone's mm-hmm. fucking team and when you do it live you have your team when you walk out yep. you know it's already already uploaded so <clears throat> if you want to do it make sure a you have if you don't have access to a smartphone i don't know what the hell you're doing <laughs> but if you want to you know laptop tablet smartphone um as far as the platform We've used ESPN religiously. Um, I have had some folks want us to at least take a look at like Yahoo. I don't give a shit where it's at. Yeah. To be honest with you. Um, the the only thing is I know, and I'm uh, most everyone has drafted on e, on ESPN. Mm-hmm. I've I've never drafted anything on Yahoo. Mm-hmm. So probably I would say you're. It's probably good money that we're probably going to stay with mm-hmm. ESPN because I. I know how to set up the scoring. I know how to. I, I know how the draft goes. So, pro- probably going to stay there. I, I I will check out. I will do some mocks on on Yahoo just to check it out. Maybe there's some cool shit over there that we don't know about. Yeah. So, not not ruling it out by any means. But uh, unless something wows the shit out of me, yeah. or Yahoo wants to sponsor this podcast, <laughs> then, <laughs> then yes, yes, we will we will gladly use your platform. But yeah, any other questions, guys? And gals, let us know. We're out there for you, and uh, yeah, it's it's not we're, we're not trying to keep shit a secret. Mm-hmm. So, and we we want you to understand everything as well as you can, and give us your money. We'll take it, and we'll talk shit while we're doing it. So, because that's <laughs> that's what we do, and we're very good at it. And it, it would it would be kind of cool to see the because uh, it's, it's something we've never done with the drop league either is the quote unquote punishment for the last place team. Mm-hmm. So we'll field any suggestions. Mm-hmm. So, it, it, you know, I don't, I don't think we'll go as drastic as getting a tattoo or anything like no. that. But uh, I, I do remember one gentleman dressed in a dress down by Lawson's holding a sign <laughs> that says I placed last in my fantasy football league, <laughs> which if that's the case, I would love to do that and put it on the Facebook group. Maybe go live with it. You never know. <laughs> you never know because hell it's the internet and that's what, that's what people do on the internet. So all right. Any other fantasy football talk there, Mr. 2Ks? Did we miss anything? No, I think we got it all covered. All right. All right. So we're going to totally switch gears here. And this is something that Kyle brought up that he wanted to do, and now he's hating his uh, hating his su- suggestion because, and I, I told him, I said, you know, I don't know which is worse as far as frustration-wise, being a Tigers fan like Mr. 2K's or a Red Sox fan like I am, at least with the Tigers, you kind of knew before the season started kind of where, where the ball was going to lie. Yeah. With the Red Sox, coming off the World Series, didn't lose a whole lot. Uh, Kimbrell, I think, is the only, maybe one other guy in the bullpen, mm-hmm. and they're eight games back. 
Yeah. And they're inconsistent as fuck. You know, they're losing to the Blue Jays right now, six to nothing. Come the fuck on. The Blue Blue Jays are like 12 games under 500. <laughs> and f- for the first time in a long time, they the Red Sox are under 500 at home. Mm-hmm. So, Which that, that's just shocking to that me. Fe- that Fenway cooking is not doing yeah. well. So... So I, like I said, we're we're both frustrated, and we can probably do two and a half hours on each team, mm-hmm. but we're doing the Tigers today. But you said it right. I mean, you just said it right there. You guys are coming off a World Series championship, so you won the World Series. Be happy. Oh, I'm... we 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 can't. You know, we're not even close. <laughs> not even close to that. And when you guys were, you, your pitchers couldn't throw it to first base. Which yeah, made it really. Hard. You know, things are bad when you when like I'm looking at stats and what's going on in the double a and triple a every day i don't even really care what's going on in the you know with the major league club so that's how i know that things are you know awful right now and the 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 first first little point on the docket would be that i want to talk about was obviously expectations for this season and then more importantly moving forward to next season um ultimately I, i i i guess i'm I'm one of the odd ducks. I love watching these kids play. They're not – probably three-quarters of the team should actually be down in double or triple A somewhere. Mm-hmm. And to me, it, it, it's exciting to watch – not – what I'm saying is watch their progression. Mm-hmm. Watch what they're doing. Watch them evolve. I think you and I are both in agreement. I, and if Tigers Nation is not, they can kiss my ass – Lloyd McClendon needs to be out of Detroit. Oh yeah, I've been saying it for years. It's, I mean, <clears throat> get him aw- get, get out of the whole city. I mean, look, send him to Ohio. Yeah, I mean, even looking back to when the Tigers were really good and were competing for World Series, they still were. I mean, they were they were still hitting below you know what they should have been doing. Yep. And then he took off and got that somehow ended up getting the Seattle job, managing job. And that lasted for a year, maybe two years. <laughs> I was going to say, I think two. And then you somehow know, made it back with, then, with Brad. Yeah, Detroit brings him right back in, and it's just like, what is going on? Why are we? Why? Why not try something different? This obviously isn't working. Yeah. Try something different. Yeah, and I, I brought up the the team lead uh, the team leaders in uh, offense here, and uh, it, it it doesn't shock me at all that Cabrera is leading. In, in average, no, no. We're I I think he's he's leading with two ninety five going into today. I think we're used to seeing that up around three fifteen, three twenty. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But his his progression, I'm I'm actually fine with. Yeah, I'm, he he, my, he he looks healthy. Yeah, his his attitude is there, and if you look at from a from a pitching standpoint, I wouldn't give him anything to hit. I'd, I'd want to face everyone in that lineup four times before I want to face mm-hmm. Cabrera. Mm-hmm. So it, with his power numbers being down and RBIs, now there's a lot of times where he's up and there's no one on base. Yeah. For one. And I mean, and don't get me wrong, I love Miggy. I love everything that he's done in Detroit. But my problem is I'm tired of of trying to think up of more excuses for him. Mm-hmm. You know, he's the highest paid player on the team, one of the highest paid players in the game. You were not. You're not. You're not making that amount of money to hit five home runs uh-huh. and two ninety five. You know those numbers need to be two ninety five, three hundred. That's fine. But you need to be hitting. You need to be at at least fifteen, twenty home yeah. runs right now. That's the amount that they're paying <clears throat> you. That money. That's you're. You're paid to, to drive in runs. You're, paid, you're not. They're not paying you that amount of money to bat three hundred. You know that's it's very true. I'm tired of the excuses with them, and it's. And when your home run leader is Brandon Dixon at nine. <laughs> Um, it's almost July, and your lead, lead, your team lead, and home runs isn't double digits. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, it, that that just blows my mind. It seems like Bellinger and Yelich hit about nine a week. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, the the I I I guess what a couple of the shining points is Brandon Dixon. I I think he's playing the field well. He's hitting well. Mm-hmm. Jacoby Jones has, if he continues, they're going to have a, a starting center fielder for many, many years mm-hmm. that's going to hit damn near three. I'd probably say 280. Mm-hmm. 280 is very sustainable. And, you know, a little bit of pop. He's got, yeah, that's that's what's impressed me about him this year is he has shown some signs of some power. 
I and, think he has what either seven or eight home runs behind Dixon. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. and can can steal bases yes. when he gets on too. Yep. And and uh, so he's one of the you know he got up to a really really slow start and that's mm-hmm. why his average is still where it's at. But this past month, you oh, know, he's been on fire. He's, yes, so he's he's kind of he's cooled off a little bit here the last week or two. But he, he's been one of the one of the few very few positives that we've been able to, to see so far with with the team. Um, but no, you asked me the question: What are my expectations? Honestly, um, can they out suck the Orioles and the and the Royals and the enough to be able to get that first pick in the draft? Yeah. Because to me, that's what you got. I mean, that's that's they're not gonna they're not gonna be in the playoffs. No, they're not gonna compete for anything. So, I mean. The, their their best option is just to tank and try to get the the best draft pick that that, that they can get. And their, I their, their farm system has got to be one of the top. I'm not probably not the top, but in the top five, mm-hmm. I would say. Well, and they're, that's... they're they're from you know, and this is something else we're gonna get to a little later. But the trades that they have made have improved the farm system mm-hmm. immensely. Mm-hmm. Their drafting has been pretty on point, mm-hmm. and so. And th- this is the main point I think that you, when we were talking before, you hit you hit the nail on the head. Is that Tigers fans lately have been I'm not gonna say spoiled, but they're used to winning. No, oh, yeah. The, if, if you go back to the Bobby Higginson days, when he was the only All Star from the Tigers for eight or nine years, it seemed like we've. If you've been following him for that long, it. With a team in a market like this, it's 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 a circle. It's, a, uh, it's like a circle. Hi. <laughs> but no, it, it ebbs and flows. Mm-hmm. Ebbs and flows. You know, you look back at the at the eighties when the Yankees were, were completely fucking awful. Before you know the the Posadas, the Jeters, you know, you know Mo. Mm-hmm. Before that whole crew, and then they just started dumping money. They were horrible too. Yeah, the Red Sox were horrible for a long time, mm-hmm. and you know, and you see all these Cubs fans walking around. Oh my God, the Cubs suck. Cubs this, Cubs that. Well, the Cubs sucked for a lot of years. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the there's an adage with Cubs fans. They said, you know, three days after opening day, well, there's always next year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it it's it it's unfortunate. To have to do what what, what they did to mm-hmm. get get rid of a guy like Verlander that you that's homegrown, you know, and a lot of these other guys that we didn't want them to get rid of. JD Martinez, Rick Porcello. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a even David Price. You know, there, if they could have hung on to a lot of those players, they'd probably be the Red Sox right now because yeah. it seems like they have the vast majority mm-hmm. of them. Yeah. But it's it's there's a business side. And then there's you know fans fan expectation mm-hmm. side, and, and w- when you're a fan, it's short for fanatic for mm-hmm. a reason. So mm-hmm. I appreciate the Tigers fans' drive, their hunger. You know, D- Detroit fans overall are very 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 loyal. Mm-hmm. They 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 bleed and die with the teams that they follow, which is awesome. The fan base in Detroit is amazing, mm-hmm. but take a step back, calm yeah. down. No, no, no amount of anger and bitching and griping is going to get Verlander back. Yeah. So, and I'll, I'll, we're going to get into prospects here, and where I'm going to turn this turn this ship over to you because you're you're balls deep in that, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm about tip deep. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, school some of our listeners on um, the farm. You know, we we touched on the farm system a little bit. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of with the expectations from here on out. Um, but my m- before we do that, my, my expectations for the year was it's you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of players that probably should be like I already said not up in the not up in the bigs. Mm-hmm. So you're seeing double and triple A players playing against major league ball players day in and day out, which is a good thing. But it's also a frustrating thing. It's a good thing because, you know, the, the old adage, you can't get better unless you play the best. Mm-hmm. They're getting a crash course in it. They're, this experience right now is going to be, in, you know, invaluable mm-hmm. when it comes to the future. So you're, you're getting a year under your belt 
with the, with the big league team, with Gardenhire, with his staff, and I say that with a an, a weird emoji, with uh, Lloyd McClendon there, but you're getting all of that where you would normally be down in you know triple A, double A, and not having that. Mm-hmm. So it's a frustrating thing. I, I totally understand that. And I, I Tigers fans, I I'm right there with you because I, I watch probably more Tigers games than I do Red Sox games. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I feel your pain. I feel your pain. But in this is something that you kind of hit on before we even went live is you know, some of the folks that you that you were that you talked to is like, oh Houston, Houston, Houston. So I'll let you take this part and uh, school us on the farm system, the state of the farm system, mm-hmm. your thoughts. and Well, the, the first thing that I'll say is the game, the game has changed. You know, you look back 10 years ago, and it was more of a who's going to buy the World Series this year? Who's going who's gonna to be the Yankees? Who's going to out Steinbrenner yes, Steinbrenner? Yes, who's going who's gonna, to you know, sign all three, four, maybe five? of these multi-million dollar contracts and buy the World Series this year. And it's not like that anymore. You look back to last season, Boston winning, winning it. And, you know, a lot of people think of Boston and especially having Dave Dombrowski there. Dave Dombrowski is not afraid to pay. Well, going into that season, or maybe the year prior to that, Boston's had maybe the number one, if not number one, number two farm system mm-hmm. in the game. So they built from the bottom and brought all these young kids up. And then when they had all the young kids coming up at the same time, that's when they went and spent the money to bring in all the all the pieces to fill the holes. Same thing happened with Houston. Houston was horrible. Horrible. They were the worst team in baseball for years. Like five straight years, yes, it seems like. Yes. And they built from the bottom up. They got all these all the draft picks. You know, you get three, four consecutive, you know, top five picks. Obviously those guys are going to pan out. You or, know? You, or, or you'd hope so. Otherwise yes. you need to hire some new yes. some new some new talent. And, and you look World Series before that was the Cubs. How many of those kids and with the Cubs that are still with the Cubs today came up through the system? Yep. But then after they got that, after they had all these kids coming up, then you go and you sign John Lester. Mm-hmm. Or you go and you sign... Um, Jason Hayward. Yes, Jason Hayward come in, Ben Zobris. You know, all those those pros that you come in and, and fill the holes. Same thing with the Kansas City Royals. Did the same thing. So that's... It's not... You have to start from the bottom and, and work your way up. So when the Tigers started this rebuild, they were at... I, I want to say they were 30th in the league as far as their farm system. Yep. Their farm system was the the, the worst. Well, and they, now they they had to trade away so many dudes oh, yeah, to yeah. you know to yeah. to bring in the you know the mid season trades or yes. the off season trades to get that get when, when you, right now they're well it, it, at that point they were trading prospects to get talent. Mm-hmm. Now they they have been trading talent for prospects. Mm-hmm. Yep. And one thing I brought up was. In baseball, it's a lot different, the trades, because normally, like, take football, for instance. Mm -hmm. We either trade talent for talent or talent for talent and draft picks. Mm -hmm. So you see that you you see the 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 trade off almost instantly Mm -hmm. where baseball, when you're trading for prospects, they're prospects for a reason. And you might not see them for three, four years, yeah. or sometimes yeah. not even see them see them yeah. at all. So, and and the, and the teams that are buying at the trade deadline are obviously the teams that are winning. So, as you, if you're winning, if you're, you know, one of the three or four best teams in the game, your farm system is probably going to start to, you know, deteriorate as yep. as it goes on. You're going to go from being maybe one of the top to, in three years later, you're going to be down at the, you know, 25, 26 in the league. That's just the way it works. So the Tigers have worked their way up from 30th, and now they sit at 12th. That's where they're ranked at now is 12. And a lot of these people are like, well, you got rid of J.D. Martinez for nothing. How do you know? How do you know? <laughs> you, I mean, obviously it worked out good for whoever got J.D. at the time because you're getting a 300 hitter that can you know, hit 30-plus bombs and drive in 100 runs. So obviously it worked out for you. But the other three names, as Tigers fans, with exception of Lugo, you haven't seen any of the other two. Right. You know, they're, they're 19 year old kids. At the, when the trade was made, one was 18 and the other one, I think, was 19. So we haven't even seen them yet. And then you look into the people are like, oh, Verlander, you got rid of him for nothing. We haven't even seen one of those players play for the Tigers yet out of that trade. Yep. So obviously, yeah, Verlander for, with Houston now is working out great. Shit, it should. He's been, he's <laughs> maybe one of the best pitchers of all time. Yep. He's a definite Hall of Famer. 
Obviously, it should work out for Houston in, in the beginning. <laughs> but you got, but they, the Tigers got three prospects out of that, and all of them under the age of 22. Give it some time. Yeah. Be patient with it. See what happens. At the same time, teams aren't going to just throw away, throw you know their best prospect or their two best prospects for a guy like Verlander, who at the time wasn't throwing very well for the Tigers, and kind of needed a change of scenery to kind of get back in, in on a winning team and and build off of that because Verlander's a winner and when he when things are going good with the team yep. that was when he was pitching at his best with the Tigers when things started to kind of fall apart with him he wasn't pitching that great at the time so teams were going to shy away from just throwing all their best prospects at Verlander who wasn't pitching very good at the time and also came with a very hefty contract and they didn't want to buy on into all that money so but so what I'm saying is be patient a little bit I know that we were spoiled there with Dombrowski and Illich, basically just you know. He wanted oh, to win. He he wanted to win a World Series so bad. Yes, yes, and, so bad. And unfortunately, it killed the Tigers because they they have they had so many and still have so many bad contracts that they're trying to work out. Mm-hmm. But be patient with these kids. They have they've they've done they've done really well in the draft. Oh yes, you know, they, and <clears> it's, it's a lot of they've drafted pitcher heavy. You know, mm-hmm. this year they changed it up with Riley Green with the fourth pick and went with an outfielder, but up, up until then they their first pick in the you know in the first round of the draft had been pitchers, and all those kids are on their way up. I mean, we've seen. I know everybody's a little bit scared about Casey Mize right now, but that's who they took last year with the first overall pick, and he threw a no hitter in his first double A game. Yep. So they're going to get everything worked out. I think probably there's going to be a good chance that they shut him down the rest of the season. They I mean, should. There is no they point of, of rushing him back for anything, nope. but we know what we have out of him. And, you know, he's, he's got top, he, he's got ace stuff. He can be mm-hmm. an ace and, you know, to build around in the future, but he's 22 years old. Be, you know, yeah. pump the brakes a little bit, be patient. <laughs> exactly. the, other, the other kid, they took three years ago with, in the first round of the draft, Matt Manning. He's been tearing, he's been tearing it up in double A all season long. Has a great, has, he has an ERA, I want to say, under two. Oof. He's a top 25 prospect in all of baseball. Another one to be excited about. And basically, he's uh-huh. about the same same exact age. He he came straight from high school out of the draft to where Manning went to Auburn. So, the, or, or uh, Mize went to Auburn. So, you know, they're, they're basically the same age coming up. I want to say both of them are 22. But so, they're, those are two pitchers to be very excited about. Those two coming up at about the same time. Both of them have what you call ace stuff. Both of them are ranked in the top 25 as far as all prospects in baseball. So that's a nice thing to build around. Now, three years ago in the, with the first round, uh, um, their first round pick, they took Alex Plato, who came from Florida. All he did in Florida was win. Won a lot of ball games there in Florida. So we know what we're getting out of him. He's actually, he he's the oldest one out of all of them coming up right now because he ended up staying his, you know, for all four years in Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't have the... A stuff I think that the other two have, but <clears throat> could be that three four guy in the rotation. He's very consistent. He throws strikes. Another one to be you know to be excited about. So the pitching is there. They had pitching doesn't scare me. They have you know multiple arms that are coming up that I think are going to be very very good for them. It's the position players that a lot of Tigers fans have been like, man, our our, our position players coming up are are very weak. Well, yeah, they are. I mean, <laughs> that, that, you can, there's no hiding that. But they're in the Verlander deal, they were able to pull a catcher and an outfielder out of that. I haven't seen him yet. The catcher they say is really close to make you know making his debut. Probably will be be a part of the September call up, so we'll be we'll get a chance to see him. Um, but that's so that his name's Jake Rogers. Uh, swings and misses a little bit too much. That's kind of the knock on him. But they say as far as a catcher, he's the best minor league defensive catcher in you know prospect coming up. So that's exciting. Because you know we t- we touched on it a couple weeks ago with our with catchers, we ne- we don't really necessarily want need a catcher that's batting over three hundred and driving in runs, um, as long as they do their job behind the plate and then maybe bat a consistent two fifty five two sixty and drive in some runs. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so for him, I'm I'm excited about him because I, I obviously it can't get <coughs> much worse than Grayson Griner and the catching situation they have now. Didn't I see he, he's on the IL right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. Um, but then, and the outfielder that they pulled in the Verlander deal is Daz Cameron, who I think that kid's gonna be a stud. People that are big time baseball fans probably know the name Mike Cameron, mm-hmm. and Daz is Mike Cameron's son, and uh, so he's one that I'm pretty excited about. Um, if he has got an arm a, that's half as good as his dad. Yeah, yeah, Jesus. And he got off to a really good start um, this season in the Double A, and they actually moved him right up to the Triple A 
um, just to get him some some more experience against pitchers with that have have more experience themselves. So, you know, mm-hmm. A lot of times the best prospects are in Double A, but you kind of have more of them seasoned vets that are in the Triple A game. So they moved him up there, and uh, he hasn't been hasn't been hitting as well in the Triple A, but. You know these kids are they're twenty two or twenty three. They're just starting to get their you know their first few reps with you know in uh, you know professional ball. So the consistency is probably not going to be there a whole lot with them. You know they have to build up on that. So but he's another one that I'm excited about. Um, another shortstop that they have coming up that they say it was going to be another one that could be called up here before the the September call ups is uh, Willie Castro. They got him last year in the uh, Leonis Martin trade with Cleveland, mm, yeah. and um, I totally, kind of at, I totally forgot he was on the team last year. Kind of at the time, I mean, everybody was saying that you know the Tigers got have won this trade, won this trade, and you know he was kind of a guy that with Francisco Lindor playing shortstop in the, at the major league level, he was kind of stuck there. He wasn't going to get you know the call up because he wasn't going to have opportunities to play every day. Right. To where coming over to the Tigers situation. They don't have a lot of you know depth there in the middle infield, so he's going to get his chance probably sooner sooner than later. So, my my thing is be patient, be patient mm-hmm. with them. Um, have have they won the, these trades that they've had so far? Right now, no, absolutely not. But that's not the way it works. You don't normally win trades right off the bat in baseball because you're trading away, you know, you're trading away your best assets for prospects Mm -hmm. so you have to give that time you have to you have to wait four or five years and see what happens and a lot of these you know some of the people are are knocking on the duel lugo pickup from the jd martinez well lugo he wouldn't be he wouldn't even be playing at the major league level if it wasn't for the tigers being really really bad and the tigers having so many injuries yeah they he was kind of forced to you know to to, to come up before he should you know before he should even be playing there so you know, I don't think he's looked that bad, to be honest with you. He he's inconsistent. He he's, he's a kid. That's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. He's gonna swing and miss more than he should, mm-hmm. because I'm I'm almost positive that ball moves a lot more in the major leagues than it does in any other league that you played in. Mm-hmm. So all, all in all, I maybe I maybe I I just look at things differently, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but now the the one we we actually should have had Christian on today, not to pile on how bad his White Sox are. <laughs> But the White Sox started their rebuilding two or three years prior to the Tigers. And you can now see some of those prospects paying off on the big league level hardcore for that team mm-hmm. now. So it, 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 we probably should have had him on and kind of explain how he feels, mm-hmm. how he sees some of these major trades. Because they, they traded away their quote-unquote Verlander and Chris Sale. They mm-hmm. traded away some big, big names that have mm-hmm. been there for a long time for prospects. Yeah. And, and, and the, the thing with the White with the White Sox were, was their quality of players that they had to move were just as good as Detroit's. The contracts were so much more friendly. Oh, yeah. You know, they oh, were yeah. they were so – Sale wasn't <clears throat> even making close to the amount of money that Verlander in that contract no. had to make. And you look at Quintana, you know – the trade that they made with the with the Cubs within the Quintana deal, I mean, they brought the Cubs gave away everything. I mean, so much. I thought they overpaid so bad on right. that, especially with the re- the return with Quintana. Yes, and mm-hmm. I mean, then you, even you look at the Adam Eaton deal to Washington, and you're bringing they got Gio Little, and you see what he's doing for him this year. Yes, you know, for Adam Eaton, that's so. It it goes to show you, like when you talk about, um, you know, why are the White Sox getting these these such better deals than the Tigers. The money, the yeah. money situation. The Tigers had so many bad contracts. The, the J.D. Martinez contract, you know, contract, the thing with him was he was going to be a free agent at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. So teams are not going to are going to buy, they're not going to buy heavy on him for a rental player. Yeah. You know, I think everybody knew that when J.D. was traded to the Diamondbacks that he was not going to be a Diamondback for the, no. you know, for the next season. No, no, he no, was no. a rental. He was a rental player. And that's all. So you're, they're not. It's just like you look at the Tigers now. And everybody's saying, "No, oh, they're going to trade Castellanos," which they will, but they're not going to get this haul out of him. He's no. going to be a free agent at the end of the season. He's got Boris as his agent, so you know he's going to be calling for a shit ton of money. He want he's going to want a big contract, and so t- teams are not going to you know be willing to throw away their you know top five prospects that they have for a, ca- a rental player for th- two 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 and a half months. No, I think, it's not going to happen. I think with uh, green, you'll see more prospects being thrown in that trade. Mm-hmm. 
because he, he he can impact the game more. Mm-hmm. And I I have no idea what his contract status looks like, mm-hmm. but I think he's going to garner the most attention, mm-hmm. obviously, because he's he's found his groove. He's fell on his own. Mm-hmm. They're, and he's doing an amazing job. Their best option, and you know whether or not this can happen or is possible or or whatever, but to me the Tigers' best maybe their best trade option is to package uh, Green and Boyd together. Yeah. You know, you look back, you look at the trade that I thought the Tigers did a really good job with was when they packaged Justin Wilson and Alex Avila to the Cubs and the haul that they brought back on that with Candelario. And they also got Isaac Paredes, who's another young middle infielder that we haven't seen yet, who they're very high on. And so they they were able to get two pretty top end prospects out of Justin Wilson, who, you know, yeah. he had his he had his good years as a reliever, but mm-hmm. he's not you know, he's not a, the closer that teams want or the he's you a, know the, he, the, he's the head a, setup man. He's just a, he, a he's a serviceable bullpen yeah. piece and and, and and a lefty to boot. Yeah, so. and for and and it worked out. And the Cubs, you know, wanted a, a catcher also that was good behind the, the, the good behind the play and also <laughs> left handed hitter. Right. So you know, so that's why I'm saying their best their best deal is maybe packed them together to a team like the Phillies, who the Phillies could use a little bit of help in the bullpen and they could also use a starting pitcher because they haven't really had much consistency there right. with their starting pitching. And if they can package a deal like that and maybe pull, you know, a kid like Alex Baum from uh from the Phillies who was their, you know, top draft pick last year, who I think they drafted him third or fourth overall. That's just a baseball name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But and you know since he's been drafted and being in the, in the Phillies minor league system, he just he just hits and he looks he looks like Chris Bryant. I mean he's just a a six five third baseman coming up and just looks like an all around baseball player. So to maybe package up a deal if you can get a big name like that, yeah, it might be their best option. Yeah, because you might as well get as many and and I'm not saying this in quantity, but it gives get as many assets as you can mm-hmm. for your your proven players mm-hmm. and. Does it suck to see Boyd go? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's had a really good year. I th- and I think ultimately the reason he's kind of been shaky lately and him and Castellanos both is all this trade talk, oh, all absolutely. this shit going on. Absolutely. These they're in the in the grand scheme of baseball, they're young kids still. Mm-hmm. You know, and Castellanos has played, it seems like eighteen different positions and you know, he, he caught some shit because they wanted him to take reps at first. And he's like, no, lock me up in a contract. And yeah. then, then we'll talk yeah. about it. Yeah. And I and I don't blame him one no. bit for saying that. Not at all. Not you know, at all. He's, going, he's going into maybe the most important offseason of, of his entire career. Why why test any, Why test a different position? You know, yeah. Go into it in the position that you feel the most comfortable at. And hopefully you, you know, work the best deal that you can in this offseason. And, you know, and... and being a Tigers fan, I, I have nothing negative to say about Castellanos. I love no. the way he plays the game. Is he a little bit shaky <clears throat> on defense sometimes? Yes. Is is he not hitting the ball the way that he should this year? Probably not. But a, a lot of that, like you just touched on, you when you're constantly in the in the you know headlines about where where are you going to be traded and this and that and all the drama around it, it's hard to relax and play baseball. Baseball is sure. a tough sport as it is. It, I think it's the hardest sport there is. So when you add all the drama and everything around it, I, f- I feel bad for the guy. I wish that they would have been able to make a deal and trade him maybe even before the season even started and just let him go back to what Do he does best thing. and just play baseball. Yep, yep. I'm 100% agree with that. And just to kind of tie a bow on all this, I think I think a, a, a lot of folks, if they take, take a step back and realize that you kind of, like I said, putting a bow on your point is – the game today is not fueled by big free agent signings. Mm. Look at the la- last two off seasons. Dallas Keuchel, a proven left-handed starter, goes unsigned. Mm. Craig Craig Kimbrell, the active saves leader, goes unsigned. How long did it take JD Martinez to get a deal mm-hmm. last year? Mm-hmm. How long did it take you know the the two big guys this year? You know, Machado and Harper. How long did it take? Which those two, those two big money deals that had that you you almost had to expect to be a long time because mm-hmm. there's not that many teams that want to pay that much. Nope. And that's the and, thing. Everybody <clears throat> shies away from these big deals now because they've seen the teams that have won the World Series over the last few years and the way mm-hmm. that they're doing things. And now, now, now they're getting a you know a front row seat to teams like the Tigers that 
basically tried to buy everything they you know every they tried to they tried to flat out buy a world series for years and years and years yep and they're seeing all that backlash now is they had they're stuck with a lot of these terrible contracts you're stuck with a jordan zimmerman contract that you still have another year on God. and you he just, hasn't thrown and but you just, maybe in, in the you just got off the the victor martinez train yes. thank god yes you know, so. And so they had so many bad contracts that they were that they're dealing with and coming out of, and you can't just you can't just wake up the next day and say I don't want that contract anymore and get rid of it. No, it's yeah. a contract for a reason. You're stuck with it. Baseball, baseball has guaranteed contracts, mm-hmm. folks. So yeah, they're going to get that money whether whether it's from the Tigers or if they trade them, mm-hmm. they're still going to be, be getting paid by the Tigers a little bit because they have to eat that. Yep. Yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. I'd I'd really like to see if they're still paying Prince Fielder because mm-hmm. it wouldn't shock mm-hmm. me. Yeah. So. All in all, folks, the game is still, you know, the game's changed. It's went to young prospects, young kids. You know, you look at every, probably the last, or well, even go back to uh, Kansas City from that World Series on, young ass teams. Mm-hmm. Young ass teams with select veterans put where they need to be. Yep. And on top of that, you have coaches that know how to coach younger players. Mm-hmm. And where, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not saying uh, Girardi did, did a bad job at, at, in, in New York by any means. Probably the hardest thing he had to do was handle egos. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you're not fundamentally trying to help players. You're not fundamentally trying to do this because hell, you've got how many? There was like ten or fifteen guys that had been with the Yankees for ten plus years. Mm. They know their shit. You know, it's more about maintaining for those guys and not learning. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and Joe Madden's probably one of the best mm-hmm. as far as he can coach. I, I, I really don't think he, he's run into a whole lot of egos. No, no. But as far as the the veterans migrating with, with, the, with the young kids, he's probably the best one. Mm-hmm. You know, Cora... Still, still the ver- the verdict's out. It's still mm-hmm. too still too early to see how he does. He's doing a ve- fantastic job, mm-hmm. but a lot of the, a lot of the Red Sox. I mean, Ben Intendi's the youngest one. You know, Mookie's been up for four years, I think, three or four years. Mm-hmm. Dev- or, uh, Devers is another one, which they're doing magnificently with him. And you know, when you you look at you know, Jackie Bradley Jr. as being one of the more tenured mm-hmm. tenured young mm-hmm. kids there, that. And Xander Bogarts is another one. Yeah. And the playbook's out there, folks. And the Tigers are running that playbook. Yeah. But it's gonna take time. Yeah, absolutely. And like we like we we've touched on this this whole day with the bad contracts that they were that they're stuck with, it's gonna add more time to that, you know. And it's just all the, the the Royals and the Cubs and the and the Astros and yeah, they built from the bottom up, but they didn't have those bad contracts to deal no. with. So they were able to flip it. A little bit sooner than what the Tigers are going to have. You know, it's going to take them more time. And you even, you know, the kings of the bad contract, the Yankees. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a reason. I mean, granted, they they snuck a few, they snuck a couple in there, mm-hmm. but not like they used to. No, not like they used to. And you know that when you get the, you know, they re-signed CC this year, but he, that was after his big contract was done. The Mark Teixeira contract, mm-hmm. um, where it seemed like. Tex was hurt three quarters of every year the last few years, which was sad because I, I loved watching him hit. Mm-hmm. He was one of the better switch hitters, mm-hmm. you know that I've that I've seen. And <clears throat> of course, the A Rod, A Rod ate a lot of that money. Yeah, and of course, you know Jeter, Jeter mm-hmm. was getting his money too. Yep. So I'm sure that's not easy to do, and you know because you know, baseball doesn't have a hard salary cap like 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 football and hockey and stuff, but they do have a luxury tax. Mm-hmm. So keeping it within an, an acceptable lu- uh, luxury tax window, yeah, yeah, that, that, that can be hard, mm-hmm. especially like I said. With there was there would be no way, no way for the if the Tigers even would have kept Verlander, Scherzer, Miggy, J.D. Martinez, those four players right there would have been just their their contracts would have been more than a lot of teams' yeah contracts. Yeah. So when 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 folks keep keep telling me, that, oh my God, they should have kept Shurs or they should have kept Shurs or well, when they when it came time, they made a decision and said we're going to put our money with with Verlander mm-hmm. and let Shurs or walk. Mm-hmm. That was coming after the year before he was he had to send him down to the minors because he yeah. couldn't he couldn't hit his ass from the hole in the wall. Yeah. 
And he came back and won the Cy Young the next year. And this is something you and I, we've even talked on this show. I would have put my money with Verlander too. Mm-hmm. He's, more, he's, he's been there. He's been more reliable. Mm-hmm. You know what you're going to get out of him. Yep. And, you know, Washington's, I think, got their money's worth out of him mm-hmm. for sure. For sure. I mean, hell, he even gets a, breaks his nose in batting practice and goes <laughs> out the next day and throws, I think, like seven scoreless. Yep. So, yep. <clears throat> but yeah, that, that a, a lot of, as Tigers fans, take a step back and just be reasonable. Yeah. Be reasonable. Be patient. Hell, if you're a Tigers fan, 98% of you are also going to be a Lions fan. And you guys have been patient as fuck with that, too. <laughs> so, but no, so yeah, that, that's a whole other worm, can of worms will open on a different day. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's like I said, just be patient. Yeah. Just be patient. Cubs fans were patient for 108 years. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was. It was the last uh, World Series in Detroit, 88. So you got a few years to wait before you hit 108. (laughs) uh, But no, baseball is getting younger, stronger, and faster. And the Tigers are doing everything by by the playbook that the the teams that we just talked about had put in front of them. Mm -hmm. So is is Avila doing doing an amazing job? Yeah, we'll see. Is he doing a good job? Absolutely. I think so, too. Because... The GM is one of the it's, – it's like the umpire in baseball. When people don't know your name, that's a good thing. Yeah. It's when you start doing a shitty job that people are like, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. So calm down. They'll come around. They have the right coach in, in, in place for this. Mm-hmm. Garden Hire is probably the top five I would want on that team with, that, with the, the age of them. And <clears throat> I think – Probably not next year, but the year after, you might see him go after a free agent, a, yeah. a bigger time free agent, because you're still going to need that veteran leadership with all these young kids coming up. Yep. So it's not as bad as it seems. Mm-hmm. Now, if we were the Marlins <laughs> with all, you want to talk about losing trades before you can even know about it. <laughs> yeah. Derek Jeter just had a fire sale <laughs> and he probably, he, he probably should just lit the stadium on fire too. <laughs> so it's, it's not that bad folks. It's not that bad. I know you want it to be better. I want it to be better too, because baseball is better when the tigers are relevant. Mm-hmm. And I, I know that's kind of a Homer thing to say, cause we live in Michigan, but it really is. Yeah, yeah. It really is. When you look at how many years the tigers have been in Detroit, it's one of those. And now mind you, there are some of obnoxious Cubs fans, but baseball is better when the Cubs are relevant too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, when when and it'll come back. Mm-hmm. It'll come oh, back. Yeah. It'll come back. I'm I'm rambling, but it'll come back. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Well, we're we're at that hour mark, so we might not be able to squeeze in the uh, the the draft talk. But we needed a week off from that, anyways. Yeah, and j- just to kind of give you a quick recap. Zion went one and cried. <laughs> um, Morant went two. And I think that's the steal of the draft. And three. R.J. Barrett. The Knicks did not fuck it up. Nope, nope. <laughs> did not fuck it up. So, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll when it gets closer to the season or here in, here in a couple of weeks, we'll kind of break down our winners, losers, and uh, give you folks uh, that are Pistons fans because I mean I I'm not a basketball fan, so I might as well inform you and give you my take on the Pistons because I'll be completely unbiased, and we'll give give you our opinion on uh, on how they fared too. So, with that being said. I've, Got anything else? Nope. All right. Well, hell, it's been been a hell of a show. Been a hell of a show. I hope you guys have a hell of a week. Uh, The weather doesn't look like it's going to be too shitty all week, but I think uh, summer's going to be here. So when I checked, I think it's going to be over 80 and almost 90 a couple days this week. So get out, have some fun. Put us on the Bluetooth because uh, we'll entertain you wherever you want. So hit us up on the Facebook group. Like I said, I I will be putting out those, the the feeler for fantasy football and don't forget those two golf outings um go help support them and the the wildcat opens what the 26th next saturday next Next saturday Saturday. next saturday so uh yeah if if you guys want to get in on that um i will find out where you should who you should get a hold of but uh, we'll help uh help get you there and uh the fairway frolic challenge is going on so we'll get some information on that as well. And yeah, get out, have some fun. Put us on the Bluetooth while you're sitting there drinking a nice tall frosty by the pool and yelling at the kids. And uh, 
I think that wraps it up. So Jim Rome, we're coming for you, brother. 